People ask me how I started as an artist. I tell them in vitro because my mother was an artist and she was my first teacher, Elizabeth Caldwell Talford Scott. She is a nationally known textile artist. I don't know when I started feeling serious about ceramics. I think from the very beginning, I don't think I ever really thought twice. I just worked every day. And uh, then all of a sudden, it was 40 years later and I was still working. I have always, ever since I was five years old, I've loved to make things with my hands. That has always been my, my principal joy in life. So much of it was my own sense of, of total enjoyment of being in a quiet place, hearing, doing my hand playing, uh, my chisels, and just feeling in control of my life and just made me very, very happy to do it. When I was quite young, my grandmother would live with us every once in a while, and she was a tailor, and she taught me how to sew. She is the one who sort of instilled in me this notion that through thread and needle, you can capture stories. I was a rebellious teenager who was coming of age during the Vietnam War era. So they signed me up for a Saturday jewelry class. The Saturday jewelry class would change my life. Something in that skill set just fit me. And it was a kind of perfect balance of utilizing my love of mathematics and measuring things and pattern making with a, a creative outlet. I had thought when I was an undergraduate in art school that I wanted to design furniture and lighting, lighting fixtures. And I remember uh, wandering into the glass studio and seeing a couple women working in there and I thought, wow, that looks really cool. I really should take that class. So I did. And then I was hooked. Our mission is really to, to make contemporary craft accessible to all by collecting the best and the widest range that we can find um, to educate through craft, both, you know, hands-on through classes and workshops and also from publications. Fiber Arts Magazine started up in the mid-1970s. I did a lot of writing for them. Then I had an opportunity to write on crafts for a regional section of the New York Times. And that was writing about all craft media. My sister's mother-in-law was on the board of ACC. And she looked at me one day and she said, you'd be a great board member because I had business experience and board experience and I knew a little bit about the craft world at that point. Shortly after I joined the board, I was asked to be show committee chair. And I decided I really couldn't do that if I didn't go to all the shows. And so I started going to all the shows. At the time, I, there were 11 or 12 of them. I had just so much fun and met so many wonderful people. And I just submit to the moment and go both feet forward. It is just a pure joy. You can feel, I can feel it sometimes, my brain going, oh, no, you did, no, yes, you did. Put that over there, wow. The spiritual thing about knowing that this will in, enlighten and, and invigorate somebody else. Somebody else is going to go, oh, and there's going to be a smile just on someone. Everything is useful. Since you can only choose from what you know, from what you're aware of, so your obligation of, as an artist is to really expand that bank and know about lots of things and know about everything. So when you need it and you grab it, it's there for you basically extractive capitalism or capitalism that moves wealth up to fewer and fewer people. I'd say that's the big theme for me, um, that, that that evolved from personal issues with me and my dad to looking, trying to look at the bigger and bigger picture. Craft is as common as oxygen, and when it is absent from our air, we notice it. <laughs> right? So for me to be able to tap into something that is sometimes unseen, but is 
so incredibly powerful. And to reframe it in a way of like, well, do you see it now? And let's use its power in this way. Then that is actually the thing that has been perhaps most fulfilling for me. I do think that spending decades in one medium allows for a kind of deep investigation, and that's important to me. Becoming an expert means that you completely understand the vernacular of a field. It has kind of freed me up and allowed me to sort of tackle things in my work that have nothing to do with jewelry or metals. They have to do with history and they have to do with humankind and uh, larger issues that I'm interested in. What if all that glass were black, were opaque? And how would that be different? And you're sort of confronted with this wall, basically, of these, you know, of glass that you would think you would normally see through or not really pay attention to, and now it's not letting you do that. Some of that ha is, has to do, as I mentioned, with our current political situation, but it also just has to do with this idea of things that we kind of take for granted. Um, you know, this, I this ability to kind of understand the world and, um, and maybe realize that it's a lot harder than we think or there's a lot more to it than we knew. People come to Fuller Craft, they're given the opportunity to relate to these objects and to also discover new possibilities for these objects that we live in and new possibilities for this material that surrounds us every day, whether it's wood or glass or metal, fiber or clay. You know, and it really elevates the everyday into something transformative and something magical. And I think that that kind of connection to our own humanity is what makes craft so powerful and what keeps our visitors coming back time and time again to see what we have on exhibition. It's also how fiber is being looked at. I guess it's just the expanding awareness of the largeness of textiles in in human experience and how it has been important to the cultural history of humanity since the very beginning and how it continues through all the culture of the world. It's like a common language that can get over language barriers. I don't see it as work. My life would have been so different without this. I've made so many wonderful friends that share a common interest and so many artists who do who become good friends who make these amazing things and I don't know I feel like I've gotten more than I've given it's been a great adventure it's very important because it is an organization that creates opportunity for trans people that talks catalogs and fulfills those kinds of uh, educational and aesthetic needs that's what the American Craft Council does and it is a beacon for artists. It's a beacon for craftspeople who know that there's an organization that represents and supports them.